Hello. In this video, we are going to prove the following theorem. Every non-empty finite subset of real numbers has a largest element. Now, what do we mean by largest element? Well, given a subset of real numbers S and an element M in S, we say that M is the largest element of S if for every element X in S, X is less than or equal to M. And notice, we're trying to prove a statement about every non-empty finite subset of real numbers, which means we're proving a statement about every subset of real numbers that has a positive integer number of elements in it. So here's what we're going to prove. We're going to prove for all positive integers n, we add that for all subset of real numbers with n elements, s has a largest element. And we're trying to prove the statement about every positive integers, so let's use induction. So let's start out with the base case. In the base case, we're trying to prove that this statement is true in the case where n is equal to 1. Which means we're trying to prove that for all subsets of real numbers S, where S has one element, S has a largest element. So this is what we want to prove. And since we're trying to prove a statement about every subset of real numbers that has one element, give me an arbitrary subset of real numbers that has one element. I'll call it S. And our whole goal is to prove that S has a largest element. Now, since the number of elements in S is equal to 1, this means that S is a singleton set of some object. I'll call it Y. Now, since Y is the only element in S, well, we expect that Y is the largest element of S. And what that means is, is in our definition, if we take M to be Y, then we're trying to show that for all X in S, X is less than or equal to Y. So, we're trying to prove a statement about every element in S, so give me an arbitrary element in S. I'll call it X. Now, since Y is the only element in S, it follows that X is equal to Y. So, X is less than or equal to Y. So, putting this together, given an element X in S, it follows that X is less than or equal to Y. Since X is arbitrary, this means for all X in S, X is less than or equal to Y. So, y is the largest element of s. So, s has a largest element. So, putting this together, given a subset of real numbers with one element, s has a largest element. Since s was arbitrary, this means for all subsets of real numbers with one element, s has a largest element. So, we have proven exactly what we wanted to prove. So, this completes the base case. Now, let's move on to the induction step. Now, in the induction step, we give ourselves an arbitrary positive integer where this is true. So let n be a positive integer and suppose that this is true. And the whole goal of the induction step is to prove that this is also true for n plus 1. So really, we're trying to prove that for all subsets of real numbers with n plus 1 elements, s has a largest element. So this is what we're trying to prove. And since we're trying to prove a statement about every subset of real numbers with n plus 1 elements, give me an arbitrary subset of real numbers with n plus 1 elements. I'll call it s. Now our goal is to show that s has a largest element. Now, since n plus 1 is clearly not equal to 0, this means that the number of elements in s is not equal to 0. So surely s is non-empty. So, since s is not empty, there is at least one element in s. I'll call it t. But next, since s has n plus 1 elements, well, if we remove the element t from s, then the resultant set will have n elements. Now, intuitively, this is pretty clear. 
but really we're getting this fact from the following property about finite sets. Given any two sets A and B, if A is finite and B is a subset of A, then A set minus B is finite. And the number of elements in A set minus B is equal to the number of elements in A minus the number of elements in B. Right, so really what's happening here is if we take A and B to be S and the singleton set of T respectively, well, S is finite because S has n plus one elements in it. And we know that the singleton set of T is a subset of S since T is an element of S. So by this fact, we can conclude that S set minus T is finite. And the number of elements in S set minus T is equal to the number of elements in S minus the number of elements in the singleton set of T. Well, the number of elements in S is n plus one. The number of elements in the singleton set of T is one. So if we do n plus one minus one, we get n, right? So that is really where this is coming from. But now we can apply our induction hypothesis to S set minus T. Right, we know that our induction hypothesis holds for every subset of real numbers with n elements. Well, since S set minus T is a subset of real numbers with n elements, well, if we take the S in our induction hypothesis and substitute it for S set minus T, well, we can conclude that S set minus T has a largest element. And I'll call this largest element U. And we're going to have to move back up to the top, but before we do that, let me just write down some stuff for safekeeping. Now remember, our goal is to show that S has a largest element. And we're going to show that by dividing this up into two cases. Either T is greater than or equal to U, or T is less than U. And in either case, we're going to show that S has a largest element. Let's start with case one, where T is greater than or equal to U. Now, in this case, we claim that T is the largest element of S. And what that means is, is, well, in our definition, if we take M to be T, then what we're trying to show here is that for all X and S, X is less than or equal to T. So since we're trying to prove the statement about every element in S, give me an arbitrary element of S. I'll call it X. And our whole goal is to show that x is less than or equal to t. Well, either x is equal to t or x is not equal to t. And now we're going to show that in either case, we have that x is less than or equal to t. To start, if x is equal to t, then x is less than or equal to t. Next, if x is not equal to t, then we have that x is an element of s, but not equal to t. Which means x is an element of s set minus t. And since u is the largest element of s set minus t, we know that everything in s set minus t is less than or equal to u. So x is less than or equal to u. And we know that u is less than or equal to t. So x is less than or equal to t. So no matter which one of these happens to be the case, we have that x is less than or equal to t. So given any arbitrary element x and s, we have that x is less than or equal to t. Therefore, T is the largest element of S. So, S has a largest element. So this completes case one. Now let's move on to case two, where T is less than U. Now in this case, we claim that U is the largest element of S. Which means, if we take M in our definition to be U, then what we're trying to prove here is that for all X and S, X is less than or equal to U. So since we're trying to prove a statement about everything in S, give me an arbitrary element of S. I'll call it X. And our goal is to show that X is less than or equal to U. And to do so, we'll divide this up into two cases. Either X is equal to T or X is not equal to T. If X is equal to T, then we can take the T here and substitute it for X. So we get that X is less than U. So X is less than or equal to U. So that completes the case where x is equal to t. So what happens if x is not equal to t? 
Well, if x is not equal to t, then we have that x is an element of s, but not equal to t. So x is an element of s set minus t. And we know that u is the largest element of s set minus t, so everything in s set minus t is less than or equal to u. So x is less than or equal to u. So putting this together, no matter which one of these happens to be true, we have that x is less than or equal to u. So given any arbitrary element x and s, we have that x is less than or equal to u. This shows that u is the largest element of s. So what we see here is, in either case, s has a largest element. Well, one of these has to be true, so s has a largest element. So now let's put this all together. We started with an arbitrary subset of real numbers s with n plus 1 elements. From there, we were able to deduce that s had a largest element. So, since s was arbitrary, this means for every subset of real numbers with n plus 1 elements, it has a largest element. So we have proven precisely this statement, which completes the induction step. So we've completed all parts of the induction, so this closes the induction. So what have we proven here? Well, from the beginning, we have proven for all positive integers n, for all subsets of real numbers s with n elements, s has a largest element. And this tells us that the theorem is true. Because if we give ourselves any non-empty finite subset of real numbers, say s, well, since it's non-empty and finite, this means that there must be a positive integer number of elements in s. So we can apply the statement we just proved, and this tells us that s has a largest element. And so this completes the proof. And so yeah, that's pretty much it for this video.